You, you really have been telling us about this for a long time. You're one of the ones that have said, you know, we got to pay attention to this stuff. And uh, I guess an inconvenient truth, that the documentary was eye-opening to a lot of people. Yeah. And now you've written this book. And uh, tell everybody, I mean, we know what it's about, but what made you want to write this? Well, the future is unfolding a lot faster now than ever in history. And along with global warming, we have the genetics revolution and the computer internet revolution and the resorting of the world's power relationships and the emergence of a fully integrated global economy, Earth Inc., uh, a growth trajectory that's putting pressure on w fresh water and topsoil. And my purpose was to try to get all of these six drivers of global change together in one place, look how they're interacting with one another and identify the choices that we need to make to protect human values. Mm -hmm. And what, what are you, well, first of all, let me ask you this question, because there, there, there's a rumor, I don't know if this is true or not, that some scientists are trying to figure out a way to block the sun <laughs> to try to, to slow yeah. down global warming. Yeah, it's a measure of uh, the feeling of desperation that some of them feel. Are they really thinking they could do that? Well, if, yeah, some of them are seriously proposing, and I, I think it's completely nuts. Yeah. Uh, you know, you put a, another kind of pollution, sulfur dioxide, up to orbit the cover the atmosphere. The sky won't be really blue in the way it is now anymore, but it would block out some of the sun's heat uh, so that we wouldn't have to take the difficult steps to stop spewing all this global warming pollution into the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. uh, and, of course, there are a lot of problems with what they're proposing. It, it turns out plants need uh, sun, sunlight. Yes. Uh, it wouldn't stop the acidification of the oceans. And uh, it really should be yet another wake-up call for why we need to stop putting all this pollution up there. We put 90 million tons every day up there, and that's what's uh, drying out the soil, 60% of the country in drought last year. That's what's causing, contributing to the worsening of these fires in the West. West Nile virus, worst outbreak ever last year, Superstorm Sandy. But we need to start speaking up and letting the elected officials know that the future matters to us, our kids and grandkids matter to us, and we need to start cutting down on this pollution. Well, I think, I think it does matter, but I think a lot of people just aren't educated enough, and it's because a lot of the information is kept from us, because a lot of people in power don't want us to know how bad it's getting and, and what we can do to change things. And I think we can, there are things we can do to change, like give give us some examples of what we could do to kind of re reverse this. Well, in, we need to make choices in our own lives to try to use renewable energy where possible. A lot of utilities allow you to sign up for it. But most important of all, in our role as citizens, we need to speak up, use the internet, connect with others, and let the political system know that we care about this. Uh, and you know, winning the conversation is the key to a lot. Of of changes. I remember when I was a young boy in, in Tennessee when we won the conversation on civil rights. I remember uh, one of my friends made some semi racist comment, and another friend said, Hey, man, we don't go for that anymore. And that was during the time when that conversation was won. And the issue of gay rights, I saw a story recently about uh, two gay guys waiting in the pizza line uh, and some homophobe made some nasty comment and literally everybody else in the line spoke up and said, hey, cut that out. We're winning that conversation. It's a great thing. And There's a lot, I mean, you know, the evidence is everywhere, you know, with all these superstorms, with the flooding, with yeah. everything. I mean, one of the reasons, I'm vegan because I love animals, but it's also, for me, environmentally, it, uh, they say that if every person just didn't eat meat, all meat, not, not just red meat, but chickens, one day a week, it would be the equivalent of taking eight million cars off the road. Yeah. Just one day a week. Paul McCartney started this Meatless Mondays mm -hmm. uh, campaign, which yeah. I think is a, a great campaign. And since January 1, I've been eating that way, and I'll tell you that it has made me feel better. Mm -hmm. And so one day a week has got to be good for you, yeah. good for the environment. Uh, for I the recommend planet. it. Yeah. Um, well, the future is in bookstores now, and today you're all going home with a copy, and we can change this. We can